Hello, good day and welcome back. So we're going to be talking about URL and road parameters. Now, I know in the previous video, section 7, I said that oh, we're going to be talking about services in the next video, Angular services. But in preparing the material, I realized that oh, that would probably be skipping a little bit. So again, I want to enjoy one concept at a time. And so in order to talk about services, I'll need to talk about some other things. So um, yeah makes sense to just kind of get these other things out of the way. So in talking about um, routing parameters, um, we're going to be need to understand what is a URL, what is a URL path, and parameters. And before, usually people say query parameter or the query string. Um, it was one way of referring to how you specify parameters in your URL. This is called the query string. And then we're going to kind of talk about routing, um, providing parameters in Angular to your Angular routes. And then we're going to talk about dynamic routes. Okay? So let's jump in a lot of material. And this video already looking like it's going to be very long. So let's get started. So what is a, an URL? So URL stands for Universe Resource Locator. And so if you kind of look at it backwards, it's locator. And you want to think of a locator as just a identifier to be able to locate something. And resource is just anything that you can get basically from another computing device. Um, we don't want to restrict ourselves to just a server or something like that. And so we're going to just say some computing device. And universal, well, it's just some representation that will allow us to be able to say that, oh, this thing uh, is different from something else here versus something else here. And um, basically, by being able to use a host name, as part of the URL um, that allows us because hosts on the internet are unique. Not necessarily a host name, but the host name are sort of unique. Um, but we haven't really delved into how networking and TCP IP really work. So um, that's in a future video, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. But basically, uh, host name gets results on IP address and IP address on the inter internet are all unique, especially on the public internet. Uh, internally, you can do whatever you want. But we're talking here for the most part about something that's on the, out on the internet. And so that's what a URL stands for. And in terms of what it looks like, um, you might not realize it, but there's actually a structure and a format to it. And so it's the, the part that represents the protocol. And usually you've seen this as HTTP. And that's because most of your interaction probably on the web so far has been using a web browser. And so web browser uses the HTTP protocol, which is hypertext transport protocol. And that's what HTTP stands for. And so that comes for us, and that's why you usually see people type HTTP. But it's actually optional when you're using a web browser. You can actually leave it up, and your web browser is going to nicely insert that for you. Then comes the host name, and that's basically where this information is located. And then another part is the port, colon port. And again, you've probably not, had, not seen or had to type it very often, but um, the port, again, for the HTTP protocol, the default is port 80. So usually when you use HD protocol, uh, your web browser understands that you want to use port 80. And since the web browser, it also assumes that you want to use the HTTP protocol. But you can use the HTTPS, which is HTTP secure, and that port is 443. Um, and again, when you specify HTTPS, your web browser knows that you kind of want to use 443. But you might want to um, use HTTP the protocol, but then put your web server on a different port for security reason. Or for other reason that we're going to see, I'm going to run a local HTTP server, and I'm going to run it on port 8000. But we'll get to that later. Um, we're not going to talk up too much about why I need to run it on a different port number. I can run it at 80, but we'll get into that in much, much future videos. And then next comes the path after the port. And so this is going to be sl forward slash and then the path. And again, this is also optional. And then question mark parameters. Now, when you don't specify the parameters or the path or the port and you specify the host, for example, um, then your web server automatically knows which file to request as the default file and it makes that at the root or the, the root of the web server. But we'll see more of this in a bit. Talk about the path. We said in your URL, in your URL um, there's a protocol, host, and port, and then the path. Path comes before, after the port and before the parameters. So what's the path? The path is it's pretty much exactly like your file system path. For people who are on Unix and Mac, uh, or any Unix-like system, 
um, that's where your pad looks like a, like a Unix file system pad. And that's where um, the web servers and most of the internet was born as on Unix. Um, if you're on Windows, you're accustomed to writing path with a backslash instead of a forward slash. But uh, regardless, even if you type a forward slash in your web browser and you're talking to a Windows machine that's running a web server, it still understands that how forward slash means um, the path where I could find this particular resource on that web server. And we'll see a little bit more of this. Now, it's important that you specifying a path, when it gets to the web server, the web server could turn around and look wherever it's configured to look for this information. So um, there not necessarily needs to be a one-to-one -one mapping of the request path and the path actually in the file system, though they can be. And in the example I'm going to show, you're going to see that one-to-one -one mapping. But I just want to make sure that, you know, I don't set you up to think that oh, there's always, here's a one-to-one -one mapping. Cut a few examples. And so let's say I make a request um, HTTP colon forward slash localhost. I didn't specify the port. So here the port's actually, the port defaults to 80, like I said before. And basically what I'm saying to the web, my web server is saying to the web, um, web browser is saying to the web server is I want to get the file index at HTML at the web root or, you know, at slash path, path slash. And so the web root is going to be wherever the web server is configured to look for, for, for files and resources, okay? And they don't have to be HTML file, it can be JavaScript file, um, JSON file, whole bunch, anything, images, videos, whatever, right? And so where does index at HTML come in? Well, that's one of the default things that the web browser and the web server is configured and programmed to do by convention that if you don't specify a actual file name, that it's going to look and serve the index at HTML file in the path that you asked for. And if you leave out the path, then it's assumed the path is slash, and of course, slash gets mapped to whatever the directory is. And then uh, you can do something more specific. You can say, I want file, um, the file, file that HTML in the path slash. And so we would look for that file. And the, we haven't talked about um, the different ways you can um, send requests to a web server. But one, you can do different, the web server supports several methods, several methods. And one of those methods is get. There's put. There's um, update and delete and head and a whole bunch of other ones. About three of them we're going to probably play with throughout this course towards late, much later. And that's going to be get, post, and um, maybe put. Um, anyway, so not update, sorry. I, I, I said I meant to say put and put is like your update and, uh, and post. But anyway, we're not going to go sidetrack with the different methods. But for now, we're just going to focus on the get method. And if you're using a custom port, as you're going to see just now when I run the example, I'm going to run a local web server in a directory. And again, you could use any directory. And that's going to be think of my web root, uh, where resources are going to be find, found. And it's going to be on port 8000. And then I can ask for, again for just the, the default file there, which is the index.html. I can ask for, you know, article directory or, or anything like that. So in that example, um, here, um, you can't see my mouse, but then the line that says, go to, um, give me, fetch something from the articles slash path, the path is slash article. I'm actually saying, give me the index file in that directory. And if there's index files, I, I get it. Now, if I do the same thing on slash post, as you'll see when I run the example, there's no index file there. So what's going to happen is my web server is configured to, by default, render the listing, a directory listing, which is to show me all the files and directory there. But it doesn't have to do that. Again, the person who's administrating your website can do something different. But if you were to run a simple web server, that is the behavior it's going to get um, exhibit unless you change it. So let's talk about parameters. Parameters come after the path. And the way you know this is because before you, you, you start typing parameters or your query string, you put a question mark. Now, um, I'm just going to say parameters for short and just keep it away without keep saying query string. But back in the day, that's how we, we, people used to really refer to this. And I'm not going to go into why it used to be called like a query string and so on and how it used to be passed at external programs. But suffice to say that you put question mark and then you specify a key value pair using an equal sign. And then you can separate multiple key value pair with an ampersand. And so you can see an example. If we look at the very last example at the bottom, you can see I'm saying, I want to get something from google.com, question mark, um, Q equals to AngularJS, ampersand, um, RCT equals J. And the ampersand there is between the two um, key value pairs. 
And so I'm passing a key Q with a value of angular js and a key RCT with a value J. Not that very difficult or hard to really get. Um, the example before where I use Q equals the angular JS percent 20 tutorial, the percent 20 is how you represent a space in the query string just because if you put an actual space, it you know can get misinterpreted and so it needs to be what we call escape. And so uh, it's just a way to make parsing easier, okay? All right, so that's pretty much the example there. Um, what we should do now is actually look at this, um, run some, a simple web server and kind of play with this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is basically play with a few examples showing you how path and, you know, request with path and without parameters or with parameters sort of behave. And so you've seen examples before of, you know, just paths alone without any parameters and then, you know, using a path with parameters. Again, you're just combining the two ideas. So I'm gonna jump here to the command line and fire up a um, simple web server. I'm gonna use Python, so I have Python installed on my computer. If you have Python installed, then you can run the same command. You don't need to install anything else other than Python. If you don't have Python, then don't worry about it. Um, so I'm gonna fire up Python, and but I'm gonna fire it up inside this particular directory here, the example one directory. And what you're gonna see is if I t do tree and enter, it shows you all the files in this directory. And I don't have too many files other than, you know, this directory article with index, file in the directory itself, index.html in the directory itself, a post directory, 2016, a directory within post, and then in post, two out of um, files. And so I have three directories and five files. So let's see what happened when I go to, if I were to fire up um, my Python web server in this directory. And again, remember, since I'm started my Python web server here, this becomes my web root. This directory is my web root, which means my Python web, my web server is gonna serve files from this directory only and not outside of this directory. So directory here, this directory and any subdirectory. And so now I can go to my web browser and if I were to bring it up on this port, port 8000, we'll see that it's gonna try and it's gonna give me without me saying, um, specifying the path, file on path, um, here, don't ignore, this is something that was old from before. But if I just take that off and just do a request, it's gonna give me index.html. And I didn't have to specify that I want index.html, remember that's the default. Because when I leave off the path, it's like forward slash, and when I don't specify the file, it's, um, you know, by default giving me index.html. Now you can configure your web server to be the default file to be something else, but this is just convention. That's how it's always been. So just now you saw me um, make a request without a path or a file name and I got index.html, but I can still specifically request um, index.html in the path slash root. So I'm gonna type exactly that. I'm gonna type forward slash, that's path. And then the file I want is index.html. And so I get the exact same file and we could see that all the request now is very explicit contains the, the, the path and the file, right? Um, but um, I also have this file, file.html. Um, so I can, um, in, my, in the directory, so I can request that also. And I should be able to um, type file.html and that's the file I get, right? Um, Notice how um, the get and uh, 200 here is just basically saying 200 means it's okay. Um, that's the number that's returned to say that's how it's okay. I could request the article directory and because there's an index that HTML file in that directory, again, remember if you request a certain path and um, there's an index that, and uh, you leave out the file name from the path, then if there's an index that HTML file there by convention, it will serve that. And of course, I can still specify index.html with the article directory and I get the exact same file, okay? Um, what about if I type um, post, for example? Um, if I type post, since I don't have an index.html in the post directory, um, because of how this web server is working, it's going to give me a directory listing. And so I see the 2016 directory and the uh, um, post that one and post two file. Oh, we know that 2016 doesn't have anything in it, so um, even if you click there, you're not gonna see uh, a file because it's, it's empty, right? So it, it's, it's blank. 
um, of course you can also click on any one of the files too and those would get loaded appropriately right so again nothing magical pretty straightforward pretty simple and you can see the different requests here okay so let's start play with some parameters pass and query parameters right or just parameters so I reset things here, just clear my screen, restart the web server just to keep the screen clean. And let me go to the web browser here and um, make a request. And so I will make a request and then add some parameters to that request. So here I'm going to add Q equals X, uh, X and I'm going to enter. And if you really want to see what's going on, now you could look here and, well, it doesn't seem like it is updated. So let me try it again and refresh the screen and see uh, try another file okay force it to refresh now that was because the page was cached but never mind so you could see it shows up here in the web server um, the entire um, request but to really see the effect of this parameter let's go and look in the browser debug area say so for chrome it's view developers javascript console and then i'm going to click on the network tab if you're using Chrome or Safari, it, that's basically the same thing. It might be in some other menu item. And so I'm going to do another refresh, and then I'm going to click on the request here. And now you can see on the response tab, it shows you exactly what it got back from the web server, which is the content of that web page, which is what is in the file. And the web browser takes that, interprets it, and shows you above, right? Now, to, let's, we need to look at the headers, though. And if you look at errors, forget the general part, let's just tell you that, oh, in general, the request was okay, it was a get method, like I said before, the, these different methods, and, you know, it was 200 okay, which we saw on the web server output, but um, then if you go down below, um, you're going to see um, response header, um, you're going to see um, how long the content that was returned, type is text, and so on, and uh, the date and the server that made the, that responded so uh, that's just, that is all fine and dandy uh, the next place we really want to go though is down to the request itself so as we look in the request header here we see a number of things the host the request was sent to and you know um, uh, caching and cache control and what kind of stuff is accepted and so on um, some of we're not really going to worry about. The important thing for us is down at the bottom here, which is the query string parameter. We see that all that matches up with our Q equals X. Now we can add more parameters, like we said before, and we have J equals the hat. We can click on the request again, and now you're going to see down at the bottom there, our query string has been updated to reflect that. And so you can keep adding more and keep testing this idea and see that it does work. So we've got to play with paths and parameters in the URL. And as all before, we had single page web application frameworks like AngularJS. And remember, when we say SPA, SPA is single page application framework, pretty much all of them are going to work the same. And so one of the things that they have is this idea of a route, which we saw. And a route come after this, when you put a punk sign, you can specify a route. So ignore the path. Your path can still be whatever it needs to be, but then you're going to have this punk sign and then the route afterwards. And then after the route, you can still have um, question mark and then the parameters. So you could see that the new thing we did was we took the route and we inserted in between path and parameter. And um, because um, these application frameworks are so cool, one of the things they can do is basically read from the web browser itself what the current URL is and kind of, you know, do things for you, which is like switch the pages, load something else and all this stuff, um, all without actually making a full request back to the server. As, you know, you kind of alluded to before that you didn't need the entire page because the application framework could just get partial page and substitute it on different sections of, your, um, of the uh, browser. And that's what we, we've been playing with, with this routing. So how does routing affect our parameter? How, or would it benefit or how easy is it to get those parameters that we pass to our route in our um, route controller? Because remember, when we have a route, we have this controller and the page. So we're going to be able to make decisions in our controller. That's what our controller is for. And so it would be nice to have those parameters there. And so we're going to see how this can be done. Another thing that um, framework like Angular allows you to do is make dynamic routes. And so dynamic routes are routes where you can specify a pattern that has to be satisfied. 
and when that pattern is satisfied you want to be able to know what the missing pieces are or what the part that the user type in is and so it becomes part of your parameter and this is going to make sense when we actually look at it some example so instead of me keep talking about it let me just show you so here are some examples with um, routes and query parameters and even dynamic routes so the first one we have what we call it basically a static static means fixed right so a static route with parameters so if i do pong forward slash and uh, we know the road there is just slash, and it's not the path, that we'll, it's gonna get a little confusing a bit, but let's just say this is a road to slash, and after that road, I have a parameter I'm gonna pass, which is Q equals test. And so the road to slash and the parameter is just Q equals test. And in Angular, all your query parameters are given to you are just a, a um, JavaScript object. So we know JavaScript object, they're just, you know, the name of the thing, colon, whatever. But I would put equals here to, to kind of just show you that oh, that's what it is. And then your next example is like, let's say you had a road slash user, and then you pass a query parameter, um, you know, ID equal five to it. That's always would show up is your road to slash user and your query parameter is, you know, ID equal five. And you can imagine the next one is just more parameter. Dynamic routes are slightly different. So the and a standard dynamic route, imagine that you wanted to pass an ID to your road, but you didn't want to type um, question mark ID equals one as we did in the very previous one. What we want to do is put the ID as part of, make it look as part of the road, it's a dynamic road. But we don't want to specify user forward slash one as our road. What we really want to do is specify user um, slash user and then say colon ID as the road. And when Angular sees colon um, some name, it says, oh, this part is dynamic. Basically, this part can change. And so we would specify the road as slash user forward slash colon ID, and that would allow us to actually invoke it as like forward slash, you know, user one, five, all these other things, even a string like Bobby. And so now our ID is equals to whatever that value that fills in the place. Now, it's important to note that if we specify forward slash user forward slash colon ID as a route, that forward slash user alone is not a valid route, okay? Because unless we specify that as a route. But in this particular case, forward slash user alone doesn't satisfy the parameter here that it must be forward slash user, forward slash something. And that something could be one or several characters slash digits, whatever, okay? Next example is we might wanna have something like um, forward slash user, forward slash ID, forward slash some action to be performed. And again, this can be still be a dynamic road, and then we'll let the user or, or in our web application will create the links that says what is it that we have to perform and inside our controller we can say oh if action is equal to edit I do x y and z if it's new I do something else if it's sprint I do this whatever um, for this user one or something like that so there's an example of how um, a route like this can be defined um, of course you might actually just want to fix part of your route and it doesn't mean that once you introduce a dynamic part the rest have to be dynamic so here the example on the dynamic road is the third one slash user slash one slash edit where slash user and slash edit is fixed and only the ID in between is dynamic. And so you can always, you can have anything like slash, you know, user slash Bobby slash edit slash user slash five slash edit, but you know, it must end in edit to be considered a valid route. Um, and there can't be any more slashes in between. Like you can't have like slash user slash five slash boo slash edit that wouldn't work okay all right because each slash is considered a, a part of that parameter and in this case uh, when you're doing the road dynamic routing and that wouldn't fit the pattern i know if we combine routes with um parameter then you can see that we can have something like post economy question mark and you know your post um can can have a dynamic part um following it and then you can still provide additional thing the key here though is note that I said that any dynamic part of your route is also considered a parameter. And so too are all those other things that come with question mark. So now you can see that my params actually includes category economy plus all the other stuff that's passed in with the question mark, right? Hopefully that's not too confusing. Just make it really convenient for you and your controller knowing that they come together. All right, so now let's play a little bit with our um, Angular, JS, Routing, and Parameter and see what's different here. So um, you can still use the live view in brackets to run the example here in um, the subdirectory example two for section um, eight. 
but I'm going to use Python, the Python um, simple HTTP server because uh, let me control C to stop that and I can show you what's inside this directory, right? So um, only these three files, index, page, and the CSS. Okay, so let me run Python HTTP server and that's running on port 8000 and I'm going to refresh my page. And you can see now that I'm using AngularJS, a single page uh, framework with routing, it puts the pong sign after the path, the slash root here, and then it puts my route, which is the default route slash. Now we we could see that in the code here. Um, so if we look at index, what we see is that we have a slash route that says load page one and run this um, test parameter controller. Now page one is very simple. Page one just says print the value of path and print the value of params and pass it through the filter JSON. We talked about filters before. And so what does my controller do? My controller is just takes the scope and then these two um, values that are being injected by um, ng route called location and route parameters. And for location, we can say location that path and it tells us the current path. And we can say, get the value of just parameters, you know, and just save it in this scope variable called params. And that's what we're going to show here. And so when we go back and look at uh, the web browser now, uh, uh, here it is. Let's bring it over a little bit. Um, you can see that the path is forward slash, which is what it's supposed to be here. Because remember, the path we're talking about here is the road. It's really the road. So Angular is kind of the path, but you want to think of it as a road. And so to see, let's, let's go back here and look and see which other road we have defined. And so we have the slash user road defined. So let's just see what's going to be if we type user. And enter, and as you could see, what Angular is calling path is really the road. So it's nothing that comes before here as the um, path as we discussed it before, but it's what's come after this pong sign, which is the road. And, you know, we can, of course, pass parameters here. So we can do our favorite Q equals X, and we could see it here. And that's just a JavaScript object with a key value, right? ampersand r equals hat and we could see it or we could keep going and it's just going to keep so angular is going to parse this for us from the entire url and provide it in this um, object for us in our road controller so when we go to our controller if we inject road param angular is going to provide that for us so we can make you know use of whatever the user pass in um, let's play with another road so here's post and post says a valid post route, which is dynamic, is post followed by something. And whatever comes afterward, I'm going to call it ID. So let's just see what that means. So if I just type post here and I enter, it goes back to slash because that doesn't qualify um, for a valid route. So there's no route that just post alone. It's post forward slash something. So let's do post forward slash one. And so you can see while the route is post one, we still get um, ID, which we specify here as part of the route. And this is where you get those dynamic routes. And that comes in as a parameter, right? That ID, the part of the route. And so we can still add more parameters here. So we can still do our Q equals X. And so that gets added to that. And of course you can add more stuff, right? And this doesn't have to be one um, or anything. It could be one, a number, it could be anything. It could be five, it can be, um, you know, Bob, right? And so, because it's a dynamic road, all we're saying is that it's read post followed by something. Now, there are some framework that allow you to restrict this to um, just be a string or an int, and Angular does support pattern matching regular expression pattern matching. If you don't know what regex are, don't worry about it. That's enough. Let's keep going because this can go on for a while. So we have another route here called event slash 
um, I have one dynamic part and then forward slash view. So this tells us that if we type slash event, that's not going to be a valid route. If we just type, you know, um, five, that's still not going to be a valid route. So we need to type view. And so as you can see, the dynamic part is only the part in the middle, this ID here. And so you can again make that Bob or anything else. And so as you can see, you can add more of these things so you can have more dynamic parts. You can imagine something that specified the year, forward slash month, forward slash date, forward slash some kind of action. And all those could be dynamic and just allow the user to build them up or you construct them at runtime. And so again, we can still keep doing the same thing, you know, add more query parameters here um, that way, right? And so we see these get combined with the dynamic part of the um, route. Okay, so we've played with a number of examples and um, I hope you find this um, insightful or at least interesting. Um, and so maybe again, I've been able to teach you something or at least make you curious. And so you want to pursue some of this stuff, whether or not, um, you didn't get the full gist of it here. Maybe you can go look somewhere else and say, look up Angular routing or whatever to understand that or read the documentation. And so thanks again for your time. Um, see you in the next video. In the next video, um, I'm going to talk about um, scope again, but this time we're going to talk about the root scope. Um, and then we're going to talk about services. I think I should be able to get the services, um, but don't worry. The next video is going to come in a couple of days. I have the material already. It's just a matter of time for me to put this stuff together. Um, but anyway, see you in the next video. Take care and subscribe, spread the word. I'd really like to see this channel grow. I love doing this stuff. Um, there's a ton more material I want to cover, ton more languages and technologies and so on. It's just a matter of time. So I would I'd like to see the interest. Okay. All right. Take care and see you in the next video. Bye.